There are all kinds of predictions and prophecies for what will happen, and a lot of people seem to want to know my opinion. Personally, I find this orgy of New Age spirituality and mysticism disturbing. I also think that prophecies and predictions are pragmatic in origin and disconnected from free will. I would hope that people would be smart enough to realize that their own actions are what will determine the outcome of the future and not some prophecy or higher power who controls things from behind the scenes. In fact, this disconnect from reality is the heart of the manipulation that we are under. The elite control reality by controlling how people interpret their reality. One of the best ways to do this is with religion. Whenever people have incomplete information, we often try to fill in the gaps by using our imagination or subjective reasoning. We try to find logical, rational explanations for things. And when there are none, we often make them up on our own because it's easier than doing research and sorting out the information from the disinformation. A thousand years ago, the scientific method was developed by a Persian scientist named Al-Hassan as a means for finding the truth. The truth can often be difficult to find, which is why many people prefer simple, seemingly rational explanations over more correct ones. Science has also been guilty of using shorthand to formulate conclusions based on incomplete evidence. This is why the standard model of physics has gaping holes in it, where string theory can't seem to tie quantum mechanics and general relativity together. The folly of religious belief systems is that they hold certain things to be true based on faith and not proof. In this sense, string theory is also a religion, although a bit more complex than Judeo-Christian philosophy. Another failure of religious belief systems is the idea that fate controls the course of our lives and our history. This philosophy breeds apathy, as people think that they are too small and insignificant to have any effect on their world. Even though their seemingly insignificant daily actions manifest themselves out into the world every day, changing it in some small way that will be amplified over time through the butterfly effect. The biggest trick in the book is to convince people that their actions mean nothing and get them to give up before they even start trying. An even better way to stifle dissent is to convince people that the best way they can help is by taking action that will have no real effect on the actual world itself. Compare the effectiveness of praying to God or a higher power versus going out and joining a movement and actively being the change that you wish to see in the world. A scientific way to think about how history is created is to imagine a vast dynamic equation consisting of all the organisms and elements in the world. Even the basis of how a person interprets an event in relation to others can influence the foundations of one, one's beliefs, the actions that they decide to take or not. This is why propaganda is and has been used as a means to manufacture consent and manipulate the beliefs, actions, and thus the outcomes of history. The problem is that the equation is so large and complex that we get lost and often forget that we can play any role at all in the course of history. We fail to see that at every moment in life is a decision, one that can and will change the world forever. Rosa Parks made the decision not to give up her seat on the bus. Who's Rosa Parks? She's you. She's another integral part of the dynamic equation. Did God tell Rosa Parks to disobey police orders and remain on the bus? Did God start the American Civil Rights Movement, or was it people's actions that did these things? It is important to note that although courses of action in history have been influenced by religion, it is those beliefs in the religion that influence people to act in a certain way or not. In a sense, these understandings and resulting actions that people take move the dynamic equation forward, religion or not. A prime example of this can be seen in the Crusades, where people's beliefs and vanity that they were vindicated by God himself for bringing Christianity to the Muslim world, well, what really happened is that the manipulation of beliefs and analytical systems, where those fighting for the Crusades were made to rationalize their role as Christian crusaders and support carrying out imperial agendas for their secret masters, under the false pretext that this would help get them into heaven. If you believe that fate secretly controls the world and people's actions, then you are willingly giving up control over your own life to this belief. You are in control of your own actions, until you believe that you're not. It's the same type of mentality as studying 2,000-year-old scriptures and hoping that they can tell us something about the future, as if people who lived back then could relate to the world today. 
Obviously, studying the current state of the dynamic equation and the real-world systems of control will give you a much more accurate understanding of your environment than studying scriptures and prophecies made thousands of years ago by people who knew nothing about oil, the energy crisis, fractional reserve, banking systems, etc. Like the people who read horoscopes or books about Nostradamus and end up using the information that they get to make decisions about their own lives. The prophecies become self-fulfilling as people act upon the false advice, furthering their own manipulation. <laughs> so if everyone is predicting a major event in 2012, it opens all these people up to another staged event by the government which they will falsely accept as prophecy and go along with it. Think about it. There is no better time to use tyranny and extend the government beyond its constitutional powers than when the people are already expecting the end of the world. This presupposed belief in an upcoming apocalypse pacifies people who could help stop it by making them falsely believe that it's already predestined to happen anyway. This allows many totalitarian and fascist laws to be set up with little resistance or surprise. It really removes the nature of how appalled the people would have reacted. So in order for us to prevent another 9-11 or faked alien invasion, we need to first understand how these mechanisms of influence work inside the mind. The first step is controlling what information people are exposed to. The big six corporations do this by controlling the mass media. It is through the process of filtering and feeding of certain information that we are manipulated. Therefore, the only way to be completely free from manipulation is to have complete freedom of information and sharing of that information. The internet has been the first step toward this crucial goal and it has worked wonders for our way of life, how we communicate, and how we do business. It is for this reason that maintaining control over the internet should be our number one priority in the years to come. With the internet secure, the biggest threat to the truth is the debunkers and disinformation artists the counterintelligence and the gullible brainwashed fools who parrot them. Shills use a variety of tactics. Most importantly though is doublethink. Doublethink is the act of simultaneously accepting as correct two mutually contradictory beliefs, such as a belief in war for peace, or the belief in life after death. Death being the point at which life ends. <laughs> Logically, one would assume that death is a bad thing and should be avoided at all costs. However, it is a complete mystery what actually happens to us when we die. Due to the fact that your perception, referential totality, and first-person perspective ends at that point and you can no longer directly make changes in this world, whether there's an afterlife, reincarnation, or otherwise, what we do in this world before we die is of the utmost importance. The world we were born into was created under that same predicate its environment was influenced and set up by people who were alive before us. The next generation inherits the world we leave behind, regardless of where we go when we die. Your sins leave stains in the dynamic equation. Your actions, good and evil, resonate throughout the void. All that will remain of you is the impact that you left on the world. Your treasure is not in heaven. It's right here on earth. It's called the human race. 2012 could be the apocalypse, the rebirth, the revelations, a mass awakening, a new world order takeover with mass arrests, detentions, and enslavements, or nothing at all. The dynamic equation is totally dependent upon our actions, your actions. Violence and rioting will only get the police state here faster. You can't prevent a natural disaster, but you can do your part to keep mankind from destroying the planet. You are the architect of your own future. The world as you know it depends on you. Your action or inaction will ultimately determine the fate of the entire human race. The world is going through global changes right now. We are in the midst of a new world order, whether we like it or not. Unfortunately, the elite slave masters of the old world order have been setting up a global empire they intend to keep control over, and they finally have the technology to actually do it. Luckily, this is all being exposed through the internet, and we still have time to stop it. But we also need to decide what kind of world we want to build instead, and we can't do it alone. So join the movement, subscribe to my channel, and make an account on my website, extrapedia.org. Check out some of our ideas and start sharing your own. We are creating a library for the advancement of humanity, where all the different ideas for the future can come together and be evaluated. So stop following false prophets and become your own.